Welcome back to another episode of Red Hawk Media. We've been working on animations, and in the last episode we created an idle crack animation um, so that our character would smoothly slip from one idle into another idle animation. So after idling for a little while here, you can see that the character will now go ahead and slip into another one. And um, that was what we've been working on. And of course, a lot of these characters don't have some of the animations that you need, so you gotta get creative like this and put them together. Um, today, we wanna kinda wrap up the animations by putting the final touch on what we've got for a framework here, and that would be the throwing animation. Now, the throwing animation is going to apply to either your throwing, if your character is one of the ninjas, or your shooting, in this case, like the robot. So you can see, he, um, even though it's a shooting animation, I'm still calling it throw because that relates to the code that we're working with here. And uh, yeah, you can see him shooting away there, but there's no bullet. There's nothing coming out, so we're going to uh, fix that problem. Okay, I'm going to go to my sprites, and I'm going to go into uh, objects. Actually, I'm going to go into enemy because that's where all the robot stuff is for me. Um, wherever you've got your player sprites located, that's where you're going to want to go. And I'm going to grab just one of these bullet animations, and I'm going to go ahead and drag it onto um, into our hierarchy here. I'm going to add this in. Let's not make sure it's not a child of anything here. And I'm going to call this knife. Okay. Now this is my knife. Even though it's the bullet, uh, this is what I'm going to be using um, as is. Now, this is a game object right now, but what we want to do is we want to create a prefab. So this is my, uh, this is my chance to kind of go ahead and sort this. So I'm going to sort it to the foreground layer. And uh, now, hopefully, you can see that. Yep, it's way over here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move that over. And then we'll zoom back in so we can see what's going on. And then we're going to move this. And uh, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and drag this into position so we can get a rough idea if it's the right one. And that looks pretty good for the size. Usually they are sized appropriately for your character. So I don't want to do anything more to this right now other than I'm going to add the knife script to it. We wrote a knife script, and uh, the knife script is going to give it some movement, actually. So I'm going to take the knife script and drop it on here. And that adds on a rigid body, and then I've got the knife script, and now we're going to get some animation going here. I'm going to add some speed onto this. Let's put it at a speed of 10 for right now. And uh, that's all I'm going to do with the knife in this layer. Now, it's still a game object, but we want to turn it into a prefab. So I'm going to go over to my prefabs folder here, and I'm going to take my layer named knife, and I'm going to drag it down in here. Okay. And now you can see that it creates the prefab for it, which I'm going to be using a little bit later here. Now, another thing that we got to do. On our player layer, we want to make kind of a link um, where the knife will actually show up and where it will display when it's on there. Let's go ahead and delete our knife out of here for a right. Actually, we can leave it up there maybe to space some stuff out. Let's go ahead and uh, create a new empty. Okay. And we're going to call this one knife, uh, knife, there we go, POS, all right, for position. And we're going to take that and we're going to make it a child of our character. So if we can get up here, I'm going to add it in there. So now I've got three ground points and I've got the knife position. All right, now the knife position is where this is going to actually spawn from. So when he actually shoots, this is where it's going to come from. So I'm going to position this roughly where I think that's going to be. Okay, and now I'm going to go back to the player. Now with the player, I need to go ahead and make some connections to the things that we've created now. On your player, you've already got a player script, and in that player script, there are some things that are missing as of now and we're going to add those back in there so you can see that you've got a knife prefab that's a serialized field for you and we're going to add that in there so we're going to go to our prefabs and we're going to drag drag the missing game object in there okay and then we've got the knife position 
which is another game object. We're going to drag that in there and give that a moment to drop in there. There we go. And now all of that stuff is set, and I believe we're good to go there. Now, last little bit of what's going on here. We need to, let's go ahead and delete this knife out of here now that we've got everything all lined up. So we'll take that out of the game objects. We need to actually add or make the knife show up in the throwing event. So by my little blast here that I called knife, I'm going to add it in to the animation. Now, um, we're going to be going to the animation tab. You may not have this automatically on here by default, so you'll have to go up to window, and then you can check animation to bring that out there. Okay? Now in animation, we're going to choose our player layer and then it's going to bring up all the different animations that we've got currently. I would go through, see I can customize any of these to add different things in here. The throwing one is the one that we're working on right now though. Okay, Even though we're shooting, we're still calling it throwing. I know it gets confusing, but when you're lazy and you're not a scripter like myself, that makes it a little bit easier. So now, what we want to do is we want to add in an event, an animation event. Before we do that though, we should find a good place for it to actually show up. So up here I can go ahead and I can scroll through my animation. So if I look down here, and I'm going to go ahead and scale this up a little bit so we can kind of get an idea. And I'm going to scroll through at a good point where we're shooting. Now he's shooting, probably want him to shoot right away because it looks like the gun's going up immediately and then it's coming back down for the next shot. You'll have to play this by ear with your own script, so you'll figure it out. So I'm going to start at zero, and I'm going to right-click above that, or I can click this little button here where I'm going to add an, e an event. Now on this event, what I want to do is I want to actually select what it is that I'm going to be accessing. Now when we did our scripting, in our script, we've got a knife throw that was created in there. All right, so that means that this knife throw is going to be an event that happens in addition to the throwing animation, and it's going to happen on the very first frame. Okay, so if we go ahead and we test this now um, with the animation, he'll play through. We hit V for a shooting animation. Okay, and V is a uh, V is something that you can customize too. You can go into the player script and change that around. Um, so that you can make it different letters. Now it looks like he's shooting a little bit low, okay, like the, the bullet's not quite coming out of the gun there. Okay, we might want to position that up. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to our scene, and this is how we can go about doing that. I'm going to grab the knife position, and I'm going to just update that so it's a little bit higher here, and maybe just a little bit further away from him. Now we go back into play, and we go ahead and shoot. Oh, and that's pretty close right there. It's looking a lot better, okay? And we've got shooting going on at this point. Now, if you have the situation where you can shoot multiple bullets, like boom, 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 like one after another, that's not actually happening right here. I have to wait for the animation to finish before I can shoot the next one, all right? And if I jump and shoot, same thing, okay? Oh, we can see, though, that our bullet is going behind some of our platforms. So I might want to actually... Um, make sure that on my sorting layer that that's all set up properly. So I can go to my prefab here and then I can make sure that it's on, let's put it on the player layer so it's in front of everything. Okay. And now I go back in, let's test this out again. Just little tweaks here to get it working perfectly. And we're good there, let's jump. And it's above those layers and it's coming from the end of the gun and that looks pretty good. Not too bad. All right. So at this point, we've got almost all of our animations. There is one left. We're going to wait on that one until we come up with our health system. And that's going to be the dying animation. Um, once all of the health goes down, it'll trigger the death animation. And that's going to be the last one that we add on. Okay. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Red Hawk Media. Bye.